Yes indeed welcome back karibu sana and uh, what a way tukona Meshak Kisenge once again on the fan zone and now so Meshak we maybe on the fan zone is the favorite part of this show unajua yeah <laughs> so and we talk about the afcon right mm. and a mouth watering matches yesterday and of course today's fixtures as well south africa against cape verde later on in the evening but of course the first match will be ivory coast against mali that's today mm. but yesterday uh, nigeria i think many people just did put their money on nigeria and they did not disappoint um do you do you do you, do you think that after their game yesterday uh, against angola they are uh, they put out their title credentials uh, it is becoming increasingly difficult to uh, write them off mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. If you look at their performances up to this point, mm -hmm. they've been nothing but impressive. Mm -hmm. They've conceded a single goal up to this point, mm -hmm. and clearly you can see they won nothing but the title. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the performance they put in Angola yesterday, mm -hmm. they dominated the entire game. Mm -hmm. Just like the previous one at the group stages and mm -hmm. round of 16, mm -hmm. they have been dominant up to this point. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, probably we could see them uh, clinching their fourth title mm -hmm. if they keep uh, up with the same spirit mm -hmm. in the same is mm -hmm. and up to the final. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I like, thing, like, like about the Nigerian side mm -hmm. is how well oiled their defense is. Mm -hmm. They've been defending... Uh, Aina has been a, a rock at the back. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. They've been so strong at the back. Mm -hmm. uh, they are attacking, they are playing like a team. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think they have a chance to mm -hmm. win it. And I think they've relieved off uh, Osimen all the pressure. Maybe when you watch Osimen in Napoli, uh, the rest of the teams work for him. And sometimes the rest of the team of uh, the team or the teammates work for him. They get the ball to him and sometimes even drops deep to get the ball. But in Nigeria, it, he, he's like a decoy. I am liking what he is giving to the team. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Like, I like the way he's attacking, the way he's helping in defense. Mm -hmm. You look, uh, he just won the African uh, men's uh, best player just the other day, yes. you know, uh, mm -hmm. to cap what has been an impressive season mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. Napoli and uh, the, uh, the national team. Mm -hmm. He's been working so hard, you can see, uh, like, he's pressing, uh, he's trying to attack, uh, throwing his body on the line. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Just like his colleagues, mm -hmm. you can see, if you look at the Nigerian team, uh, mm -hmm. you can see everyone uh, clearly wants to win the title. Mm -hmm. And it will be amazing for him maybe to cap what has been an uh, impressive uh, season for him uh, with the African title. Yes, indeed. And uh, that's when, when you get to a, a semi-final or such a stage uh, in any team, it means that uh, the, the, the brotherhood or that bond is even stronger. Sure, sure, sure it is. Because you see, uh, when you are at the same is you're just close to the podium mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously Just one too thing, much yeah <laughs> <laughs> I guess they could be 180 yeah, yeah. minutes away from yeah. the title and you know yeah. uh, clearly you see uh, most of the players at their peak and mm -hmm. um, you know once that you are to a peak mm -hmm. you want to win this title yeah, yeah. so uh, you can clearly see the anchor in them to win it and uh -huh. Let's wait and see. Yeah. Probably they and then Lukman has also been, uh, I, uh, you know, the head coach as um, Pasero did um, maybe have him as a substitute in the opening two group matches. But when he's been uh, Lukman as well as Iwobi, they've really been um, an engine of some sort to the team. Uh, Lukman is on top of his game, mm -hmm. three goals up to this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's uh, the fourth uh, Nigerian to score more than three goals mm -hmm. in an Afcon after JJ Okocha, mm -hmm. Rashid Yekini, and mm -hmm. Odio Nigal. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, gotten himself into the Golden Boot talks uh, because the, two, too, top, too the, the yeah. two top guys are already out. Uh -huh. That is uh, Ensu and um, some the other, and the, the other guy from Dala. Dala yeah. yes, so Angola, he has yes. three goals, so yeah. probably mm -hmm. he could add more goals and uh, win the golden boot. Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly he's a man who is on a mission. On a mission. Mm -hmm. Palancas Negras, they bowed out in style? There is no shame in losing one nil to Nigeria. <laughs> 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 so I think they gave, gave a good account of themselves. Uh -huh. yeah, mm -hmm. after, and you, if you look at the rankings, they are among the lowly rank, rank teams sorry, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, before the AFCON began. So uh, reaching to the quarters, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fair, fair, fair result for it's them. A fair result for them, and also be, uh, at, at the in, in the background you hear you you hear of uh, the team building, and maybe trying to get back to where they were a decade ago. You know when they had uh, the ex Manuchos and they were conquering the rest of the 
continent and even going up to the World Cup at those times. And also DRC sailing through the semi-final and against Guinea. I found Guinea uh, uh, playing uh, really, they were sitting at the back most of the time and uh, maybe the quality in DRC did show. <laughs> First of all, it is interesting that uh, <laughs> DRC finally won a game at the yeah, AFCON. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and they did score a penalty <laughs> in open play. <laughs> well, they had previously uh, secured draws. Yeah. Yesterday, they came from behind and won a game. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows uh, they want it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, you look at the quality they have in the team. It's, it's so hard to ignore them yeah, as so, well. Yeah, it's so hard to ignore them, you know, and you're talking about uh, the uh, front, uh, the, their, their, their attackers, you know, and the midfielders and the attackers, like in you know, Bongondas, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And, and, Ma and Masok has also been, uh, though he's, uh, he's, he's a le le left back, but mm -hmm. he's been really, um, he's been enterprising this particular tournament. Look at the goal that he scored yesterday from uh, the uh, dead ball. Uh, in a tournament, every other player counts. Mm -hmm. You don't just count on mm -hmm. strikers to get mm -hmm. you goals. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, you, like, it's a tournament when once you are beaten, you are out. So, mm -hmm. uh, goals can come from many other player. Mm -hmm. And probably someone like Maswak, who is someone who has played in the English Premier League, he has the experience. He knows how to score. He's been scoring free mm -hmm. kick at cl club level. And mm -hmm. for me, Scoring uh, yesterday, uh, it didn't come as a shock for me because yeah. he has done it before. Yeah, and also Yon Wissa um, proving that he's, he's, a, he's a Brentford mm -hmm. man, you know, playing at the top level, uh, doing well to, 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 to slot that penalty home and settle the nerves. Mm -hmm. That's a winger probably defenders don't like to come up again. He's so fast, mm -hmm. he's very aggressive, mm -hmm. he's harassing, mm -hmm. and he uh, used his experience so well. Mm -hmm. uh, slotting the penalty mm -hmm. uh, it is at that point when you need senior players to step up mm -hmm. and he stepped up mm -hmm. and helped the team mm -hmm. and he's been having an amazing tournament mm -hmm. this could be his first yeah mm -hmm. it is first tournament mm -hmm. and so far so good for him mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe what caught my eyes that uh, most of the teams uh, let's say talk about um, uh, DRC right they have a great league, you know, they have their teams always um, regulars in mm -hmm. CAF Champions League and CAF Confederations. Uh, they, 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 we're talking about uh, the likes of uh, the Topoiza, you know, the mighty mm -hmm. Mazembe, mm -hmm. you know. But you look at this, uh, at their 23-man their squad, 27-man squad, uh, none from, from that particular league. They all left up for Chan. <laughs> 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 sure, 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 sure. When you have a wide pool of players to select, uh, you have the luxury to pick the best, mm -hmm. sometimes to drop the best, mm -hmm. and probably we'll be able to see uh, the home best players feature in the channel that will be held in Kenya. But uh, if you look at their squad, it's majorly made up of players who play abroad, mm -hmm. apart from the Simba central defender that mm -hmm. is... Enoki. Inonga, Inonga yes, yeah. yes. He so, did start yesterday. Yeah, he, he did started not yesterday. start in the round yeah, of 16. Yes. Yeah, he was injured in the yes, round of, of 16. That uh, cut and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in the um, Morocco, yes. So uh, clearly he's a top, top defender. Mm -hmm. He's proven himself. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the experience he's secured with Simba in the mm -hmm. CAF Champions League and Confederations Cup has come in Nandi. Mm -hmm. And uh, DRC have quality players. Mm -hmm. Even uh, the domestic league, mm -hmm. uh, their clubs do perform well, season in, season out, and mm -hmm. uh, you know they are former ch Chan winners yeah. and two-time Chan, yeah. the most successful side. Yeah, we're looking mm -hmm. forward to the next edition and see what they have mm -hmm. for us in store. Can we be hosting it? Yeah, sure. Uh, will you be ready? <laughs> A question, a question of time, yeah? Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. And of course, that means that uh, DRC mm -hmm. are also through. And Guinea, Guinea uh, what, what was going on uh, in uh, Kabadiawara, the Guinean coach in uh, leaving Seru Jirasi? Was he fit? Coming in just like 15 minutes to go, and this is the man who's gotten them to this tournament. I think... Breaking uh, records in Germany with VfB Stuttgart, 17 mm -hmm. goals in 15 matches. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal record, man. For a player who is coming from injury, you cannot rush him so mm -hmm. much, you know. Mm -hmm. You really have to work with the medical team and see whether he's fully ready. Mm -hmm. I think probably he was advised by the medical team not mm -hmm. to start him. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, looking at their previous performances in the previous editions, I mm -hmm. think uh, this time around they tried reaching to the quarters. It's quite something for them. Yeah, quite something for them. And you could see that the tournament was... Was, was 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 having a toll on them sure, sure you know sure, they were sure. not having responses sure, as sure. we had expected or seen them in earlier sure. uh, group matches mali again a cyber recourse today as we wind up <laughs> mm. 
it's a tough, tough, a tough, tough game. Tough it's at game. 8 p.m. on Channel One. Yeah, we yeah. are anticipating yeah. uh, an exciting match. Mm -hmm. But if you look the at hosts, the, yes. if you look at the previous records, mm -hmm. the last five matches, mm -hmm. uh, Ivory Coast has won four times mm -hmm. and drawn once. But mm -hmm. on the other side, Mali hasn't lost in the last eight matches. Mm -hmm. They've uh, Afghan matches. They've uh, mm -hmm. won four times and mm -hmm. drawn four times. Mm -hmm. If you look at the way Mali are playing, mm -hmm. uh, they are playing as a team. It's a young team full mm -hmm. of energy, uh, mm -hmm. very aggressive. Yes. And you, you look at it this way, you find, you find that Ivory Coast are under pressure, mm -hmm. you know, uh, pressure to perform in front of home fans and maybe have the cup uh, at home, win it at home. So um, Ivory Coast will be more under pressure as mm -hmm. compared to mm -hmm. Mali. Mali. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And also, uh, another interesting tie will be Cape Verde against South Africa. This is a game that uh, many have predicted that Cape Verde will be able to replicate their form. And uh, some are saying that South Africa should uh, get all their clothes out, uh, what they should uh, maybe in this tournament against Namibia, you know, when they really came out. In a second, what, what, how would you predict that match to go, South Africa against Cape Verde, as we wind up? It will be a close one, mm -hmm. a close one. Mm -hmm. uh, the tournament has proven that there are no underdogs in the, in the yes. tournament so far. So, mm -hmm. and you look, this will be the second meeting between these two sides of the Afcon. They mm -hmm. last met in 2013, mm -hmm. which was the first edition for Cape Verde. Mm -hmm. They managed to get a nil nil draw. Mm -hmm. uh, if they win, uh, it will be their first time to be advancing to the semi final. So, probably, uh, my money is on Cape Verde. <laughs> <laughs> my money is after 90 minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Meshak. It's been interesting to have you. Thank Hope you. to have you again next week. Meshak Iseng is a sports writer, soccer writer, sports uh, football journalist by excellence. Thank you so much, Meshak, for Thank sharing you. and bringing your, your knowledge, your football knowledge on, uh, with us. Hope to see you again next time. Right? And anyway, don't stay too far because up next I'll be talking to Satish and company about uh, speed racing, a superbike series coming up next. This is The Touchline. So a chance to have a look at